Welcome to YTC On The Go. Today we're going to talk about going to Universal and what that entails for our budgeting purposes. So we're going to go through our budget here and kind of determine what we think that is the best method for us. So if you recall from last time, we did price out some tickets only, we priced out some hotels, and we're going to try and stay in our budget and get the best bang for our button. To get us started, we are going to go down to our Excel spreadsheet and start talking about what the numbers reflect and kind of what we are trying to do. You can see our Excel spreadsheet now. So we discussed last time um, the five nights and tickets only and the tax. Um, and so we saw that the tickets only were $2,044.75. And we realized that the season pass was actually cheaper at $1,970.20 for our total um, expenses. We're going to go confirm that just to make sure that I didn't miss the tax because I didn't notate it. And that includes one preferred ticket because you get after the preferred pass, you get uh, free parking after the first visit. So we'll work into that and a little hint and trick coming up for there. And so, um, the rest of the parkets were um, just the no concert days for Universal Studios Florida. Uh, we'll double check kind of uh, to make sure that we don't need to increase our pass, kind of depending on what our budget looks like. But for right now, we're going to leave it at that. So that means no spring break in March, um, no New Year's, Christmas, um, no Easter or July. It's kind of a weird combination. I kind of have them listed in a different order, but that's kind of what it is. That's one of the things that we looked at last time. So one of the things I want to talk about is our budgeting. So currently what we budget um, is $225 a month. Um, so that gets us $2,700 over the year. So you'll see the formula up there. And then um, January, we get an extra check as my husband gets paid bi-weekly. I do not, I get it paid semi-monthly. So no extra check for me, but he does get two a year. And so out of each of those, because they are extra check, that goes into our vacation budgets as well as a few other extra things that we go ahead and budget for. So that gives us a total vacation budget of $3,360. So I try really hard on all of our vacations to stay under that $3,360. Now, that does not mean that's a hard and fast budget. If I can stay with that, that is amazing and I don't have to reallocate or adjust elsewhere. So that is my goal. And there are five of us, remember? So that really does not work out too much. Actually, I was kind of curious as to what that would be. So that means that I wanna stay under $672 per person on our vacations. And most of the time I can do that between uh, ward miles and some fun things like that. So one of the things that works into this as well is that we have two free nights um, at $89 per night at the IHG Premier card. So that does give us two free hotel nights, but it does cost us $89 a piece, which we have been willing to pay because honestly, most of the hotels that we choose a free night are well into the two and $300 a night. So for us, it's cheaper to pay the annual fee and get the free night of hotel than it is to um, not have it. So it also gives us some additional perks, which we'll talk about, but the main one is your fourth night free. So if you book four nights in the same hotel, you get the fourth night free. And that is an amazing deal for us and really helps benefit the card um, if we stay at least four nights. And we can usually arrange it so that we do that. And we're gonna do that here as well. Um, the other one is an IHG Select that is no longer offered. And I will have this card as long as they allow me to keep it. We have $49 annual fee 
and we get two free nights. So we each have one of those as well. So that means that we have four free nights of hotel with that uh, an average of $69 per night, which you cannot beat whatsoever with a stick. One of the things that we do is we will allocate some money for food above our normal budget. I usually try and keep an, a weekly average of about $125. So I already have that worked into our household budget. So it would be the amount over $125 that I would need to allocate for food. Um, so we'll work through that. Our fuel excess, that's gonna be, if we decide to drive, it's going to be $100, anything amount over $100 for a weekly average. So what you'll notice here is that I've kind of tripped out on Google Maps what it would take us to drive each time. And each way is about 1,225 miles. Um, I am estimating that a little bit. Um, it's kind of a roundabout number. And I'm gonna multiply that times two because we gotta get there and we gotta get home. Even though we may not wanna come home from Florida, but we got to. So, um, that is what gave me my total here. So what I did was I took that 2,450 miles and I divided it by 23. That's the average that my car um, or my husband's truck, actually either one, get about 23 miles to the gallon when we're on the highway. And that's mainly what it would be, would be highway driving. And then I multiplied times kind of the current estimated price that I expect us to pay, which is somewhere around $3.50. Now, if I was doing this in 2019 um, or even early 2020, I would have budgeted closer to $2 and a quarter probably um, because gas here was $1.89 a gallon and that's what we were paying. So we are at almost double the fuel budget right now and I'm really only expecting it to go up because of current events. So I'm kind of ignoring the fact that it's gonna cost us so much more. But it looks like that will be about $372 for each trip just in fuel. And then if I take off our $100 weekly average, because of course I am uh, using that weekly average at the higher fuel prices. And so that means it'll be about $275 extra um, that I need to account for. We have decided, um, my husband and I spoke and we decided that we were gonna try for the season passes rather than the one night of, um, five nights of tickets. We just feel like with the differential, that's, that's a huge amount of money. Um, we did look at the Cabana Bay Resort at $2,500, um, but if we only go once, um, that of course would fit within our 3360, but we actually are gonna try and go three times. One in the late winter um, time frame, one in the early spring, late spring, somewhere in there, and then one in the fall. So we're gonna try and go three times because we're gonna buy annual passes. We are going to avoid the spring break, Easter, um, and July time frame. If we would have enough and we decide we may want to go down, we may go again in December um, and make that four times, but I have not worked that one in yet. Um, I'm not sure that it would, number one, be in our budget, and number two, um, that's a lot of taking the kids out of school. However, I do think that they get a lot out of a trip and they learn a lot, um, but we're getting really close to um, high school for our oldest. He would actually be in high school if we decided to do that December trip. And I don't know about taking him out yet. So that one's kind of in the works. I'm not really sure that I wanna do that. So we're kind of working through that thought process at the moment. But for right now, we have decided that we are going to try and do the full amount. Now, one of the other things that I went ahead and checked in, I just got on Expedia and checked in flights from our location to um, Orlando in a return and it was averaging $132. The flight times were not good. So honestly, the price would be closer to $200 a ticket um, when I looked, um, but we technically could get them cheaper at the $132. So that's what I'm gonna budget in when I decide if we're gonna fly or drive. One of the other things that we have to consider is if we do fly, um, if where we stay. If we stay at the Cabana Bay Resort, then that would be perfectly fine because they have free uh, trips to um, 
the parks so you could take the free transportation within the parks which is beneficial so um i'm not necessarily discounting it because it was about 86 dollars a night but if we work into my budget here that 86 dollars a night times you know 12 nights that pretty much kills my budget so i really am trying to use our points and right now i'm kind of allocating toward ihg points and hilton points i have both of those we could lower our flight costs. We have Southwest miles, we have American miles, we have United miles. However, um, these I'm kind of allocating elsewhere that are, you know, for $200, you know, $132 to $200 flights per time, it really isn't worth using our miles because um, the AA miles, I'm planning a trip. We're going to try and do Portugal and Scotland and visit those two countries um, as well as potentially Hawaii and Alaska. So we've got some leeway there, but I don't necessarily know what I want to do. And that's kind of the same thing for the ultimate rewards as well. Um, we would like to take a cruise from the Caribbean um, and fly down to Puerto Rico and spend some time there and then take a, a seven night cruise. However, I don't know that that's going to be an option for us for a little while with the, with the kids. I know vaccinated and, and that whole mess right now um, really is, is kind of throwing a wrench in our travel pieces. So for right now, we're staying in the US um, just because we do have three young children and I'm not gonna get in a vaccinated, unvaccinated conversation at this point. Um, you know, everybody's family is different and you have different reasons for what you do. So I'm not going to, to go too much into that. So for right now, our decision is we're gonna stay within the United States and definitely for this year and we're kind of really watching for 22 and 23 um kind of how the environment works um to see if we can get out of the country in 2023 so that's kind of our goals for right now and so one of the things that really kind of kills my budget here is that 660 so let's say my entry fees let's say we're at 19 um, $170. I'm going to round for right now because I don't really care about change. And then my weekly average, I'm going to multiply what it costs and then minus $100 because that's what I'm on budgeting for anyway. And I'm going to multiply times three. So it looks like, um, about $818 is what it's going to cost me in fuel with that um, estimation of $3.50 a gallon. Could be $5 a gallon, could be way more. I'm hopeful that it stays somewhere around what it is now and um, $350, but not biting my tongue at the moment because I don't know what it's gonna do. So I have some miscellaneous expenditures and shopping and we don't do a whole lot of shopping, but I do wanna budget me a little bit. However, before I start budgeting, I want to work into what I think um, we're gonna have on hotels. So right now I'm gonna aim for free hotels, but I do have some that I'll have to work out if it's worth it. So we're gonna kind of come down here and here's a little fun trick. Um, it says that on the preferred pass, it is free after the first time. However, at Universal, if you are after 6 p.m., the notations that I've seen and the fun part is that you get free so, our first time that we drive in, uh, we will be driving two days, so we'll stay about halfway on Friday night. So, I've checked the hotels around. It's about 16,000 IHG points, and the cost is $136. Um, so, I've kind of notated that. And then, coming back, um, we have 14,000 points part of the way, and then 15,000 points if we stay again. So kind of uh, watching those point prices, I do have enough. Um, we've got 57,000 joint points and um, those would be 45,000. So we do have enough. We would just kind of run our accounts pretty darn low, which I don't necessarily know that I'm willing to do depending on my budget. If my budget has enough to pay for a hotel then and it's not worth using the points, I'm gonna pay for the hotel. But it definitely is an option. Um, for our IHG, I've already bought these. So these actually are already paid for. So I'll just mark those off. 
So that was a huge benefit of our preferred card is that we get that fourth night free. So that saved me 28,000 points um, because of that. And it really made those nights. So 42,000 points for those nights was perfect. So I got those. It wasn't quite as cheap um, in the fall. And so I have booked this one. We're staying at a separate hotel. That is just a little bit farther down the road. It's a couple, I think three or four miles from Universal. However, um, the price differential was way better than what the other hotel was. So we did have some cheaper options, but they had to, I had to pay parking. So that wasn't worth it to me because it would have been $20 a night in parking. Um, now, the hotel cost was only $10,000 per night, so that was great. Um, but by the time I paid the $80 in parking, and um, had those charges, it really didn't make it worth it for me. I would rather drive the three miles if I'm driving and I've got my car anyway. Um, then we decided we wanted to hit the beach because we're in the heat of the summer. So by the time we do Universal, we are going to, uh, to need some beach time. So we did have credit card rewards, which I've kind of put up there. I've already booked um, the Gulf Shores and I've already booked the Pensacola Beach and the Orange Beach with my free nights. All of those hotels were well over um, the $200 mark, and so I'm averaging $69 a night, which we talked about up above, so perfectly fine. Also, because of the way that we overlap um, almost an entire year, we will have two more IHG free nights to come in, and so I will count those probably um, towards this Orange Beach day I am hoping we can go to the Naval Museum and uh, at Pensacola. It is amazing. We absolutely love it where the Blue Angel planes are and all of that. However, it is on base and right now I don't know that they're allowing people. So I'm hoping by next fall it will happen, but we're kind of keeping our eyes on that. We do have um, almost 120,000 in Hilton points. Um, so I can switch these nights if I wanna use Hilton. I haven't had a chance yet to look through that, but it is very possible that we'll switch it up there. So those are our three weeks. So right now I'm working off of the assumption that my hotels are gonna be free. So when we calculated it out, um, when we take free hotels, when we take that our three trips are only gonna cost us $820 in fuel, um, even if we have to pay, I think that the one hotel is $136, so let's say I have to take the free off of the hotel and I pay for all three of those nights. It is going to be $408. So if I pay for those hotels and for our driving, because that would be our extra driving instead of flying and making it in a couple hours, um, our total cost is $1,200 for flights and for driving and paying for those hotels. The, the flight cost, it would give me there twice if I can get the $132 each way. So I'm getting a free trip essentially if we don't fly. Now, it is a little rougher on us um, because we will have those, those two extra days each way, but if we wanna visit the beach, etc. So we could decide that we just want to fly to Universal and not hit the beach. Um, but based on our family and our likes, we'll just hit the beach. So we're okay to drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off these flights, um, mainly because I have these booked a different way. So I am planning on using our ultimate rewards to transfer to another area, as well as our Southwest miles and, and things like that. So I kind of have them allocated for a bigger point valuation. So I'm really just, not going to use them at this point. Ultimate rewards, I can get cash back at a smaller value, um, but I don't know that I wanna do it at this time. So right now I've got, like I said, $3,360 to budget. Um, with this cost, I'm at 3196 We've already talked that I get free parking at the hotels that I've chosen, and I am going to use that 6 p.m for my very first time going to the park. So we're only gonna be the park. The park is open until 8 p.m. maybe. So we're only gonna get 
two hours or less at the parks our very first night, but that's okay because I get free parking that first night, which then means with my preferred pass, I get free parking all the time. So we do have to pick up our season passes at the wheel call. And so that is why, you know, the first time you go to the parks to get your season pass, you have to pay the first time. It is $26 per day to park, which is horrendous. And that is why we're going to buy that one preferred pass probably for my husband. It gives us um, free parking and it gives us early park admission. One of the other things that I have found is, is if one person has the preferred pass to get you through, um, they usually allow anybody with them because you get discounted tickets. They also can get early park admission. We have not tried it out, but we will fill you in because we're gonna see how it works. So we're hopeful that that works for us, but we don't know quite yet if that's gonna work or not. But that is our goal, is that we're also gonna get early park admission with that one preferred pass. But I'm not sure if it's gonna work with the kids and I, um, with my husband, or whether we'll actually have to go in regular park timing. We'll figure that out. Um, so we're gonna take flights off the table for right now. So I'm going to remove that off of there, move up my parking. Um, so right now that still leaves me um, just a couple hundred dollars. And for right now, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take off my $408 because I've got enough points to make it free. I don't know that it's worth it. So to go three times to Universal is $27.88 is what I have booked right now. So I'm gonna take my total cost, subtract my driving, as well as my entry tickets. That means that I can have miscellaneous shopping and expenditures of $571. I am not shopping $500, um, $600 while we're there. So honestly, I'm probably going to increase my budgeting for food, um, and I'm probably gonna do $100 each time. So if I book an extra $100 here, um, and I'm gonna do it times three, is $300. I gotta format because I'm a little crazy that way. And I'm gonna take this 572 and I'm going to subtract that $300. So that leaves me about $100 in shopping each week. That leaves me $100 in extra food budgeting each week. Uh, and I think that's very doable because we've talked about um, maybe I wanna do a three broomsticks breakfast or a leaky cauldron breakfast. Um, and the cost there, if I multiply them out, is two adults and then plus our three children. It's about $80, it looks like, to do one of those special things. So maybe we do uh, something similar to that um, for my extra food budget each time. We will take, um, we do make things cheaper. So when we're on the road, we'll take sandwiches, we'll take a cooler. Um, the hotel will have a mini fridge at a minimum, a mini fridge and um, a little kitchenette area. And if it has a full kitchen, that's even better. We'll eat more of our meals there. We really don't spend out a whole lot on meals. We would rather budget for more experiences. So we may do one of those fun items. Uh, I haven't research to more inch into that. So that gives us a good estimation of kind of what our three weeks at Universal um, will be. So if I add all of those up, I'm at my total of my 3360, which means I don't have to add any extra into our budgeting at this point. I might as we do some real research, but for right now, my budget is sufficient to do all three weeks at Universal. I don't have an extra, 275 or my hotels to do a fourth week yet. So I am gonna work through that and see if I want to do a fourth week um, in the December timeframe, just because it's Christmas time, it's at Universal, and maybe I want to do something along those lines. So this is how we do our budget for Universal. So this kind of gives you an idea of what we do when we decide what we're going to spend. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my shuttle from the airport. I don't need it, we're gonna drive. 
So I can delete that out of there because it really doesn't mean anything. And I'm not gonna pay the extra for the hotels. We're gonna go ahead and use our, our point hotels instead of staying there. It is great to have the complimentary transportation, but you have to pay parking at the hotel and it really doesn't make that then complimentary transportation complimentary when we can stay at an IHG property and get free parking. I do not know at this point, um, it's not really in my budget for the express pass or the unlimited express passes um, at this point. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on those a little bit. I'm gonna do some research and you can come along with us. So the next video, what we're gonna talk about is express passes. Um, we're gonna check out and see what everybody says. Um, we already had people comment on our Facebook page that um, they think the express pass was well worth it and it would they wouldn't go without it. Um, so we're gonna see if their opinion lines up to kind of how we travel and how it works for us. So we're gonna work through that and see if that is the best method for us. Please feel free to comment. Let us know if we're missing something or if you think our budget should be different or otherwise. But this is a really easy way of how the five of us can travel for a relatively inexpensive price. Now, you may not think $3,360 is inexpensive. And in some cases, it's not. Um, but it is one of those things that is important to us, so it is in our monthly budget. And that's one of the things that um, we really strive for when we're talking about budgeting is that everybody is different and you all have different um, wants and needs and, and pieces that fit together for you. So for us, vacation and travel is an important part of our budget. And so our budget of $200 a month, really we don't feel is excessive. Um, we could double that and have a car payment. Um, so right now we, we try and avoid car payment and purchasing our cars for cash, if I can say that correctly. And um, we would rather do our budgeting toward um, experiences and travel and, and things like that. And we've been to some really cool places and stayed under that $3,000 budget with absolutely no problem. So we feel it's well worth it and um, not an excessive price to pay. Please let us know what your vacation budget is if you think that we're totally outlandish or if you are well above us. Just remember, your travel adventure is right around the corner.